everyone. You're listening to Turtle Island News with Tracy Kennedy. Live, turtleislandnews.info, Wolf Spirit Radio, Revolution Radio Studio 8, and the Awake Radio Group, and whoever else may be simulcast me today. I want to thank you guys for tuning in. I'm going to talk about something last week I said I wasn't going to talk about, but I think I need to talk about it now. If you go to turtleislandnews.info, you will see two things. Well, probably three, four things. You'll see, a, okay, you're going to see a lot of things. <laughs> but there's an image I didn't want to put up last week because I thought it's too ridiculous. And it's been on a lot of people's minds in the last, well, I think especially 48 hours, but for the last week. These images of rods from the sky. Now, when I first saw this last week, it's an image, the first image that I actually saw of, and even the name is interesting, we'll go into it, the explosion in China. Leak two before it's news. And then, I also have another image from the Illuminati cards called Earth Magic just because, you know, I, I love those cards. You play this card to help protect a place against a disaster. Using this card lets any magic group in play use their action tokens to oppose the attack. Interestingly enough, so I want to go back to about 2004, although I, I'm pretty sure we spoke of this before then, but 2004 weapons there are a series of weapons that are in use in play right now that I need to remind you of but first we have to go to prophecies and old books Realizing, of course, they've all been stepped on so badly and rewritten by the cross dressing pedophiles who are in control right now. However, there's a story I want you to remind you of. Because I, I think it's important. It is a story of the Elia Tsar. Said I are. So, Elia, Elia, Elu, Igigi, all these names come together. The oldest term that I can find for this configuration are female. It's a woman. The Tsars are an ancient tribe. We probably got the Amazons from. I mean, we'll go into another time how words get changed. But there's a story of King David's mighty men. The Eluzar. Which means these are the handmaidens of God. And there are a number of names for these specific soldiers who distinguish themselves in combat for David. King David. That one. There are stories of women all over the world These women are larger. They are older. They are not from off-planet. They are from the other waters. They are the oldest beings. Now we know, as we've gone through these things before, that this planet was originally feminine. This is true. Female things in the ocean. The ocean came first. Male things started much later, and as we move through areas and regions of space, and I am not counting out the aliens, don't worry about it, but all the energies that are incoming from any planet system, any solar system, because the suns are connected by tubes, basically energetically. So if something male happened anywhere, it happens here. The first male being that we have on this planet 
that we can prove 100% is a tree. There is a tree stand in the United States called the Methuselah field. Interestingly enough, um, the old tree, the first tree there, what's well, a pine? which again is probably why we see all the images of people with pine cones and we've talked about how important pine pollen is. There's a tree there that may be the oldest tree on earth, by the way. It's crazy. It's not what we're taught. But it's here. There would be nothing else on the surface of this planet if it was not for trees. There wouldn't be. There wouldn't be. So it's important. He has a dirty name a little bit. So I won't say it because I'll start cracking up and I won't be able to go into the rest of the things I need to speak to you about. But the hand of God. There are these things called the hand of God weapons. One. Well, let's just talk about all of them, all the rods from God, because all of these are just as important, and all of these are in the same group. The atomic bomb. First weapon on our list may be the spookiest from beginning to end. Whether you side with those who say its use prevented the invasion of Japan and casualties on a much larger scale, those who denounce it as a war crime and an offense against creation herself, arguably this is a big scary thing. And this technology is very far out, in miles and in years. Satellites orbiting several hundred miles above the Earth serve as a weapons system. They are weapons platforms. We are encircled and encapsulated by these. One of them functions as a targeting and communications platform, while the other carries numerous tungsten rods up to 20 feet in length, a foot in diameter, that it can drop on targets with less than 15 minutes notice. Now remember, this is something I, I presented in 2004. Earlier this year, we had an army of satellites sent up for no reason that we were told encircling this planet. These weapons and I have over 200 of them and if one day you would like me to bore you with the entire list, of course I will because I'm obsessive like that and and last night, apparently, I was not going to be sleeping. I went to, I tried to go, I went to bed anyway. 10.10, which should have told me something. Then I woke up at 12.12, 12, 12, 1 11, 2 2 2. By 3.3.3, 3, 3, 3, I said, fine, what is it? I'm laughing because I don't want to cry at these at this point. Terrifying weapons. Some entitled the fingers of God, the rods of God, the hands of God, the spear of God, and also an old prophecy of when God's weapons are once again in the hands of man. 
the oldest wielders of these things that I found they're not just weapons they are women they are the handmaidens of God and men using them is not a good thing we've spoken before about holograms the actual hand of God from a cloud and I know we have an image on there the face of God is the name of a weapon a being massive lifelike holograms over battlefields some of the clouds that we've been seeing some of the configurations we've seen all around us these are very real they are not imaginary they absolutely are in the works right now sphere of heaven now if that's not enough and we'll get back to that because I realize everyone sent me the same article today and I'm on it the Tower of Babel the Canadian company has patented a stairway to heaven a towering structure 20 kilometers into the air with its top in the sky may sound like again something out of the Old Testament because these words and these names are coming up for a reason but a Canadian space company just low air pressure so the space elevator this tower has a segmented elevator that look like stairs in the core structure so you won't see it but it's implied anyway each segment formed at least by one pneumatically pressurized cell the pressure cells will be filled with air or another gas US patent says well Canada's doing it astronauts would ascend 12 miles this is their words we will ascend through this thing <laughs> rods from God really hands of God and the concept of kinetic energy weapons has been around ever since the Rand Corporation so the evil empire which I've spoken to you about the same ones who proposed placing rods on the tips of IBM's by the way in the 50's the satellite twist popularized by science, science fiction writers who obviously were working for the guys who wanted to leak this stuff out we have never been told exactly how far this research has gone and it is why I didn't want to bring up this picture because you know you can look at it and think ah Tracy it's Photoshop are you falling for that crap but if you go back to the US Air Force transformation flight plan published by the Air Force November 2003 references to what they call hypervelocity rod bundles in its outline of future based energy weapons and back in 2002 a completely other report from RAND space weapons earth wars dedicated entire sections to how useful this thing would be rods from God informal nip, nickname untraceable origin unless you go back to the hand of God or the rods that beings in all of our ancient books held and why we keep seeing pictures of kings and queens with rods in their hands so unless all the evidence as we want to be blind to it I'm thinking this is a thing 
So launching have heavy tungsten rods into space would be for a reason, would it not? Now, we are seeing some devastating events right now. Horrific explosions. As you know, yesterday there was a second blast in Bangkok. Of course, they're going to be telling us, say always then, that there's there's a lone shooter or a bomber. One guy did it. But a day after the bombing in Bangkok, other, not just one, but several explosions. They're saying thrown from a bridge in the city center. They're looking for this guy. You do see a plume of water and people crossing the bridge running as you would after hearing a bang and a plume of water. In Bangkok, well this is the worst incident that ever happened in Thailand. Talking about the bombing now. That happened Monday. There have been many major bombs. Just noises, perhaps, within the last couple days. But Monday's explosion was around 7 p.m. And I think they're 24 hours off us. That's why it's odd anyway. But a busy area filled with workers. Maybe nothing, right? But if we go back to Thursday, and the thing I didn't want to talk about, there were four incredibly large explosions in China and Russia and other disturbing coincidence that smacks of sabotage at least and mirrors the days leading up to World War I. So as a new technology brings new weapons, such as cyber attacks, the much feared dirty bomb and other nastiness, other nasty ways to kill or disrupt our lives. Are we witnessing sabotage on such a global scale that it only mirrors the days leading up to the First World War? In April, the capital cities of Holland, Turkey, Philippines, Washington, D.C., the White House, all lost power in just over a week. Coincidence? Do you want to be reminded of those stories? Let me go over. Now, I know I've said it again, but in case we have new listeners... the White House and Washington, D.C. without power. The fourth time a capital city loses power in a week. Millions of Dutch people lost power. A couple days later, millions of Turkish people lost power. The lights went out for several hours in the Philippines. National Grid Corp. of the Philippines were looking for security lapses sabotage. Power outage swept Washington area, hitting the White House, the Capitol, the State Department, knocking out electricity for thousands around the Capitol. Outages stretched from downtown Washington into Maryland, knocking out power for more than 2,500 people. Most of the outages were, yes, brief. Computer systems Um, downtown offices, access to metro trains, completely disrupted, if not completely shut off. Washington Power provider Pepco said the outage was caused by a dip in electricity, dip in voltage as a result of an issue with the transmission line. Weird? Odd? Coincidence? All of it? All of it? Coincidence? But now in the space of a month, 
four enormous explosions have happened. Now five. Um, seven. We'll get to it. Seven. But they happened in Russia and China, specifically. One of the explosions in China was so huge, the Chinese government had to seed the clouds to put the fire out. A crack in an umber- underground pipeline in Moscow created a massive fire which sent a pillar of smoke hundreds of meters in the air. A massive fire erupted in the Moscow River, southeast of Moscow, not far from a site of an oil refinery. That happened last Tuesday, creating a gigantic column of fire seen as far as as Red Square, some 15 kilometers away, rescue workers battled the flame for over an hour. The source of Moscow's emergency services have been telling people, though it's not clear what exactly caused the fire. Although a representative from Transneft Oil Pipeline said that an accident on his pipeline had occurred and it stopped pumping oil products. According to rescue workers, the oil fire began by a nearby grass fire Hold on. that reached the site of the spill. According to rescue workers, again, they heard a tremor, though, and we'd heard this several times. The Chinese authorities seeding clouds to make rain to help put out this massive chemical fire, giant explosion of chemical tanks last month. Seeding clouds again, of course, to make it rain. Stopping this dangerous inferno. A tank containing liquid hydrogen caught on fire in a port. A city sent more than 50 fire engines, 300 firemen to put out the fire. Citizens living near the explosion site evacuated. Now, of course, before we heard the number 44 repeated and again afterwards we heard more and more esoteric numbers being said because a lot of that news once again was not from China it was from Jade the infamous one who's been making up stories for the last little while but let's look at a timeline here China devalues the U.S. currency. The Pentagon strikes within mere hours. August 11th, this year, 2015, China devalues the yen by 1.9%, sending shockwaves around the world, sending off a devastating impact in the U.S. economy. August 12th, Tianjin struck by a secret weapon, the Rod of God weapon, the space-based kinetic weapon. That's not so secret. If I found it, other people can find it. Of course, and everyone's been sending me the natural news once. Yes, it's a thing. But it can be dropped from high orbit to strike almost any land-based target. This weapon instantly destroys six city blocks on the edge of a city, sending a message to China that's eerily similar to the message sent by the United States in dropping the world's first atomic bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki in World War II. United States is more than willing to drop weapons of mass destruction on civilians. It's already done it. And they tested their stuff on American citizens, too. Now, for those following the Shemida, the dropping of at- atomic bombs on Japan also occurred during a Shemita year, month of August, 1945, exactly 70 years ago. August is the month of the Black Lion. We'll get into this. 
This is precisely ten Shemitah cycles ago, or what might be called a Deca Shemitah. August 16, 2015, Obama issues stern warning about the presence of Chinese government agents operating secretly in the United States. This is reported by New York Times, and it comes at a time of growing tensions between Washington and Beijing, and Washington and just about everyone. Now with Beijing, number of issues of course, computer theft of millions of government personnel files that American officials suspect was directed by China to China's crackdown on civilian liberties to the devaluation of its currency because America cares about that, right? And as for the Pentagon's secret space-based weapon the Rod of God weapon consists of primarily a kinetic weapon arriving with unimaginable kinetic energy more than a small tactical nuclear weapon it gives the appearance at least of a tactical nuke which is immediately what I thought of when I heard about this until I saw that picture and US websites all over are speculating that this is the rod of God the hand of God weapon dropped from or orbit now the resulting lake the crater if you will in China proves that a 5 kiloton blast nuclear possibly this was actually deployed from space outrageous can be possible possible but it looks like to me anyway the China and America are already at war and this could be all over because of what's happening it's not just China it's also the USSR if we look at what happened there looks at everyone but the United States really now from natural news mainland Chinese dissidents have handed natural news the following bombshell story this explosion was raised as an act of kinetic retaliation by the Pentagon in response to China's currency war the yen devaluation. Now, according to dissident sources from mainland China, the Chinese government has put in place unprecedented secrecy surrounding the mysterious explosion and aggressive police state tactics now being invoked to control the flow of information surrounding this event. Now, realize whoever these dissidents are this could have come straight out of J2's playbook and not from what happened there but from what they want to be released because this is the crap we're hearing China's always the bad guy Russia's always the bad guy they are bad, we are good na 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 boo boo okay, maybe, maybe not the last part but These explosions have sent massive fireballs into the sky, hurtling burning debris across an industrial area, the world's tenth most largest port, burning buildings, shattering windows. The official explanation just now killed at least 114 people is a lie. Best case scenario, we are not even getting a, any of the truth. If it was this big, there should be many, many people dead. If this place was holding those much explosions, there'd be many more lives. 
So either we don't know how devastating it is, or it's a bunch of BS, like I told you last week. Although some of the images, which again could all be photoshopped, are odd. China is supposedly going to declare regional martial law in the next 18 days. Natural News says, in order to exercise total control of the movement of people and information, the government has banned reporters from the, entering the area has become arresting bloggers who promote what the government calls conspiracy theories. But if you listened to me last week talking about this, If it's a chemical explosion, you don't want to be in there. And then there's this guy, a reporter, who's apparently everywhere. Now, China has blacked out reports. In the exact same way U.S. media blacked out reporting on Dr. William Thompson, CDC whistleblower who admitted CDC buried evidence linking vaccines to autism, in both China and the United States, the government doesn't want citizens to know something. It censors the story across the entire state run media, invoking information. What? Complete control? But I don't know, guys, and it's leading really heavily towards something that I'm certainly not hearing anyone say in China now, both before and after the explosion. Chinese government has been flying black helicopters in formation across Beijing. Now, previously, an article stated helicopters began flying after the explosion, but that had been corrected as helicopters were witnessed in the sky days before the explosion as well. Now, if you've been following some of the releases made by Cash, you will understand there are things being leaded up to right now. Now, the alleged Chinese dissidents took a number of photos of helicopters, were able to deliver them as exclusive pictures to natural news. Now, is this a warning shot from the United States don't crash the dollar? or sell our debt. They have reason to believe the attack on Tianjin warning shot by the United States, which is terrifying that China is on the verge of announcing its own gold-backed currency, stepping completely away and declaring a fire sale on the U.S. debt holding. This, we can back that up. The world is pressed at this moment to completely step away from the United States. The majority of this planet has already given up hope on the United States. Your government, who is the access of evil, of course, with their um, British European counterparts and the ones most likely giving them the orders. I wouldn't say Israel so much because the United States and England and Europe help make up Israel. There would be no Israel if it was not for the United States and Europe. And that's why it's mostly Europeans in there. Anywho. United States is an economic freefall. The rod of God, though, if that was deployed, is a powerful message. In disguising it as an attack, as a domestic chemical explosion, that they just had happened to have a humongous amount of chemicals sitting there. No, I'm thinking brought to you by letter 33 and, well, but number 33 and the letters B and S.
I don't think the United States cares about Chinese civil liberties. Not if they ever. They were doing a really good job of breaking their little civil liberties when they were over here making those train tracks for you. They don't care. Never have. Not about you. Not about anyone else. They have shown nothing to me that shows that they care about you at all. But this is absolutely a weapon. There absolutely are weapons like this. And it is not an accident. And the fracture pattern around the crater proves a subground burst. If it was a subground burst, which like happened in Japan when they were trying to close up the portals to the inner earth, either try to close them up or try to open them. Could go either way. Small nuclear weapon? Possibility. Because a nuke has to push dirt, right? Blinding flash will not happen. Slightly subsurface de detonation would explain why camera sensors did not get a strange any strange artifacts. If it was not a nuke, it was something else incredibly huge, but not a fuel air bomb, because fuel air bombs do not leave craters like this. And if you remember my report from last week, people felt earthquake. No. When required, these projectiles can be commanded to dive singularly en masse at targets on our surface, smashing into the victim at orbital speeds, which is what I was leading towards in the couple incidences that were supposed to be meteors. It didn't look like a meteor to me, although Russia stopped it. That's why there was a big blast in the sky. China has this technology. Iran has this technology. But kinetic energy is very hard to stop. And it's at least as powerful as a conventional bomb. Do they declare martial law? Well, they are definitely stepping up the quiet around the event. Now, of course, many people say it's because that's how China is. They're the bad guy. We hate them. They're so mean to our people. Their people. Well, not feeling in love for the United States right now. Have the local police raids ramped up? Possibly. Are they working on something else? I think absolutely. Tourists who are not or don't stay in hotels are now required to register local police are risk arrest. This is true. All hotels are reporting details of visitors to the government, including passport numbers, nationalities, names, phone calls made from rooms. Is the Chinese government covering up what happened? Red armbands are now being worn by workers to indicate that they're serving as Swazi-like obedient police snitches. Eh, a little harsh. A little harsh. Red bands indicating total obedience to the government. Workers wearing them have all been trained how to spot dissident behavior. Well, I would if I thought my country was under attack by the United States. 
but it's basically China's version of if you see something, say something. Of course, they're going to have special trade forces in there because if they don't know it was a space weapon for sure, I'd be looking at it. Now, in preparation for China's September 3rd celebration for the defeat of the Japanese occupation, its 70th anniversary, China has banned Japanese writing in most of its large city. Government propaganda runs 24-7, but <laughs> Jade, which isn't in there, they have their own stuff, condemning the Japanese horrifying war crimes committed by Japanese soldiers against China, and it's absolutely true. The Japanese were bloody and brutal, unimaginably atrocious, mass raping of women, chopping them into pieces with machetes in their lovely little experiments they did on Chinese soldiers. Massive populations of laborers are now being the living underground dwellings underneath the clean, high-tech buildings of Beijing that seem like world-class architecture, but that's happening here. Underground cities will maybe underground dwellings, essentially low-ground mass housing basements, which are substantially better equipped than the people living underground in Canadian and American cities. Now, if you believe that World War I stopped completely, then World War II started and it stopped completely, well, this is World War Three. If you don't believe that war has ever stopped since the First World War, and there was little break in the middle because between World War I and World War II, they had to prove to themselves that they could completely dominate our minds. Not just get us to fight like they've done forever. You know, some king or some priest says, you know, you must kill these guys because they're from Satan or Lucifer or the Tooth Fairy or, you know, for whatever reason you would fight for some a-hole. They had to completely break the masses. Which is, I've talked about, they've done. They had to get you to fight and stay fighting even if it was wrong. And we've seen the ones who have stopped fighting, gone against their will, and said, no, something wrong is happening, and they get carted off to jail, or killed, or thrown out of um, locked windows onto elevator shafts, and then some bullets, and then get hit by a car with no airbag, and, you know, that kind of thing. Shaky. <laughs> Shaky ground. Financial foundations right now shaking. Oh, yeah. It doesn't take much at this point to topple public faith, unleash a mass exodus away from currencies, markets. It's also clear to me the United States considers currency games to be an act of war while justifying kinetic responses to such events. This is all fully aligned with government policies set in motion. Now, of course, they're blaming Obama. <laughs> uh, apparently, you have not looked over the history of your presence. And the blooded land that Washington stands on. I don't know, you're kind of getting some retribution now. It seems as if it's like you're built on an Indian burial ground or something. But the White House strategy 
has always been that the United States will respond to hostile acts as we would to any other threat, cyber or otherwise. They reserve the right to use all necessary means, diplomatic, informal, military, economic, as appropriate and consistent with international law. But we know for a fact they will sidestep the, I almost said bad word, heck out of international law when it uses them. No, we've decided to bomb you and you can't do anything about it. Well, we're at a point in our history of the planet that there are countries that can do something about it. If the United States is completely stupid enough, absolutely stupid enough to think they can still get away with this, it's just, it's terrifying. It's really terrifying to me. With the torture that we know is going on in American prisons now, that's covered up, the war is going on all over the world, and every time we look at them, we find the exact same thing British and American troops pretending to be something else. Our planet, right now, undergoing darn near scorched earth tactics. The end of an age. I hope it's not the end of our people, or at least the surface dwelling ones. And Japan, in its incredible stupidity, like I, I, unfathomable to me, Monday remained on high alert after a major eruption another one, a volcano in the country southwest. Now, despite a big decline in seismic activity, agency issued level 4 warning Saturday morning, ordered those living within 3 kilometer radius of craters to prepare to get out of there. Seismic activity began increasing and being increasingly dramatic Saturday morning. Data showed the swelling of the mountain the entire mountain swelled. And there were over a thousand volcanic earthquakes at Mount um, Sakajima, which is supposedly a popular tourist attraction. Now, although the number fell to 71 Sunday, 11 Monday morning, the agency said there is a chance of an eruption that could cause large volcanic cinders to fall in all nearby residential areas. So the residents have been ordered to evacuate three towns near that mountain. A spokesperson said she was aware of a total of 32 people had already um, vacated to a nearby community center. Now this is Monday morning. While this is the first time that Level 4 warning was issued, since the five-point scale system was introduced eight years ago, frequent eruptions had been a way of life for the locals. There had been nearly 700 small eruptions this year already. This mountain, located 950 kilometers southwest of Tokyo, 10 kilometers from the city of Kangoshima already. Well, it's about 50 kilometers from another Sadia nuclear plant where Japan decided to start their reactor for the first time in two years. Because <laughs> because hmm I don't know why. Why? Why would you do this? 
Then we have Costa Rica. A geological event was detected on Sunday. It took place after a period of relative calm for this colossus and had been active a couple months ago. I think remember um, trying to say its name. Turialba? No. This eruption was precedented by seismic activity the last time they had one. That lasted for nine hours. I'll go on, guys. Welcome back, everyone. And again, thank you for listening today. Um, Studio A, Revolution Radio. I have a Brazilian windows open, guys, so I'm afraid if I touch anything, my computer will have a meltdown because he's a little pissed off at me. It's a he. I don't have the female um, Windows 10 satanic version (laughs) of the apocalypse yet. Um, What else? Oh, I have to say thank you to LiveTheNews.info. And again, Wake Radio Group. You guys rock. So, long story short, natural news. If you read over the article again, there are carefully chosen words here. Speculation. Hyperbole. BS. Are they calling for martial law? Well, I'm telling you, Canada, United States is looking a little bit martial law-y right now. And dangerous. And scary. We're seeing stuff, at least things that I've never seen in my country before. Oh, kind of a funny note. We're about to have an election, not which is funny, but Canadian citizens have taken it upon themselves to lighten up the situation, as Canadians will do. And what they decided to do is, is put up signs for Darth Vader. Join the Galactic Federation. Vote Darth Vader. You know, which kind of goes with my vote Cthulhu. Because why go a little Dark Lordy or pick the lesser of two? If it was, let's go full evil. If we're going to go evil, let's do it. This scorched earth thing that we're experiencing. Not just with the never-ending wars and the interesting, um, bizarre climate changes, which it can't all be from the sun. It obviously isn't from the sun. The sun's sitting there going, I'm I'm having a nap right now. And it can't all be from the idiots in charge either. But it's insane what's going on record amounts of volcanoes and earthquakes and record busting temperatures Phoenix Egypt now Egypt of course and Phoenix as you know do get warm weather but pools were drying up you know Friday's high last week 117 shattered previous record for August 14th by 4 degrees tied all time high mark for the month of August and August is August is an interesting month we'll get into that we've kind of warmed you up for it but I, I think you're ready now it was the hottest day in the valley ever since Mercury reached 119 2013. Saturday didn't fare much better. New record, 115, 112. The heat record has also put a strain on the electrical grid, which may be the purpose for blasting us with whatever the heck we're being blasted with.
Would the United States use its own weather weapons against its people? Are you getting a little bit too uppity in Phoenix? Are you? Are you speaking out? Because we know that the United States has no problem turning their guns on our own guys. We had two mega typhoons Monday morning. Heading for Taiwan and Japan and the Korean Peninsula. One of the world's most dangerous volcanoes, Ecuador's Colossus, Cotopaxi, already declared a state of emergency. Geomagnetic storm? From what? It wasn't solar flare. A CME? CME, yes, I understand that we are seeing a lot more of the black sun lately because they're joined. I don't know what happens when they have a baby because that's what I'm thinking but strange events in more west coast marine life misery 25 humpbacks and fin whales found dead off the coast of Alaska and British Columbia Japan literally playing with fire right now. Restarting nuclear reactor when you know an area has a lot of earthquakes and a volcano. See, at what point do you say, let's not do that? <laughs> you know? Hey guys. <laughs> Okay, maybe you don't need the stupid voice, but you know, I a little bit picture some guys sitting there scratching themselves going, yeah, let's do something really dumb. Or maybe it'll explode and be really cool. Or let's blow shit up. I don't know. I don't I don't picture a woman doing <laughs> But you know if I could blow something up, I'm not saying that I would not be blowing stuff up. Guess I might. I would like to blow something up. A little something, not a big something, just to, you know, blow something up. But. And what the heck is going on in Indiana? You guys are getting humongous oil spills. Well, not even oil. It's more, again, chemical spill. Now, an area near a chemical plant, Indiana been evacuated cordoned off. Witnesses report feeling chemicals burning on their lungs and their throats. Officials officially said it's sulfur dioxide. Now of course Virgo County Central Dispatch confirmed that there may have been some chemicals that were spilled to a canal in the southern part of the city but it'd be fine. Don't leave your house, though. There's nothing dangerous in the air, but they did say officially, don't leave your house. Which is a little bit contradictory to me. So do we leave our house? Do we stay in the house? Now, this is what we have confirmed from China. At least 50 websites been closed for spreading rumors about the blast. Sensors working overtime. Trying to cleanse dangerous misinformation, but it's obvious there was some dangerous misinformation. Absolutely massive explosions were with you there. But only the article I read you last week mentioned the earthquakes that people were feeling. So if they are trying to shut down the speculation, I would if it was a lie. And we've read so much of China's so nasty and it's killer, killing the people. But what about what's going on right here? Where you want to talk about killing your people that toxic spill 
the disasters going on in Canada and the United States right now? Native tribes are already struggling, we know that. Trying to cope with that toxic spill caused by the EPA? Caused by. Yeah, I'm saying it. I'm calling it. Caused by. It turned a river in Colorado orange. And the letter from a retired geologist emerged that warned of it at least a week beforehand. Now this contractor has released some 3 billion gallons of toxic mining sludge. This was back on August uh, 5th? 5th? Is that right? I think so. While attempting to clean up an abandoned mine. So while cleaning one mine, they messed up another. So the waste flooding into, into Cement Creek has since contaminated Animus River, which is an interesting name, San Juan River, Colorado River, and Utah. Now the sudden Ute tribe in Southern California has declared a state of emergency. It's very interesting where it's built, too. Now, their 1,059 square mile reservation. Surprisingly enough, the first to be hit by this bill. A hundred mile long stream, mining waste, containing lead and copper and arsenic. Classifying this bill as a disaster? <laughs> it's terrifying what has just happened. The cost, the magnitude of this. Further downstream, surprisingly enough, another Native nation, the Navajo, already fighting the EPA over the agency's damage claim forms of another disaster. But again, these things are talked about. Of course, what we keep reading is other countries are really bad. And I'm sure other countries are really bad. But ours is sucking pretty heavily right now. And when I say ours, I mean everyone listening. Because if you're listening to me, you're probably on planet Earth. And since we haven't gotten a phone call from my alleged aliens, <laughs> I'm thinking we're here. But we are... We are in bizarro world right now. Death squads, pedophiles, psychopaths. And that's just inside the British establishment. Not pointing fingers, but I'm kind of pointing fingers a little bit. So August 2nd, UK's Express reported that British special forces dressed up as ISIS, jihadists, conducting operations in Iraq and Syria. This tactic was described as somewhat unorthodox by express journalists that said that more than 120 members of elite regiment are currently in the war-torn country dressed as ISIS. But apparently they're the good guys. And the strategy is justified to those with only official understanding of Middle East conflict where the ISIS is the bad guy, Western operations are the good guy. <laughs> and a hopelessly naive belief in the benevolence of the British military from, I guess, people who have never looked into what the British has, have done um, everywhere they've ever went or actually read anything from the 20th century um, or any history in complex zones over the last 20th century because if you do the story takes on a much more sinister form staying with the present for the moment the claim that British special forces in Iraq and Syria to fight ISIS is not credible or has it been? More than four years ago, the Anglo-American warmongers 
made it abundantly clear they were in league with, if not randomly cahooting, with their head shopping royal friends in Saudi Arabia. And they were determined to unseat Assad, even as far as to fabricate weapons of mass destructive evidence, aka Saddam Hussein, to justify a NATO attack. So when Russian diplomacy thwarted that effort, the U.S. and the British elite fell back to tried and tested and true civil war by proxy forces in the effort to oust Assad. But Assad, democratically elected by Syrian people, is surprisingly reluctant to leave. Just because Washington and Whitehall and Tel Aviv say he should, while the Russians and Iranians and Lebanese help is still available, it seems Western's proxy army, a.k.a. the Syrian rebels, are doomed to fight and die forever. To the West supplied of hired guns or the money runs out. Now, genetically adverse to accepting the hard facts here of the situation that the U.S. and British elites have recently declared their right to attack ISIS positions directly through manned U.S. airstrikes from Turkish bases. The real point of these airstrikes, however, is revealed in the fact the U.S claims the right to attack anyone who threatens Pentagon-trained Syrian rebels, who are primarily fighting against Assad on behalf of the U.S. and the British and the Saudis. That, of course, is the main point of all the death going on there. A backdoor attempt to justify U.S. military attacks on Syrian government and its military rather than fighting anybody's ISIS. They love ISIS. Dala dala. <laughs> so I think it is somewhat reasonable here to conclude, therefore, that the British Special Forces dressed up as ISIS form part of a strategy. They're providing boots on the ground to support the U.S. airstrikes on Syrian positions. So, a gang of UK special forces dressed up as jihadists also presents other awesome opportunities. They could, for example, carry out attacks against um, anyone, including civilians, if it's considered necessary or expedient, or something they could blame on ISIS. So just yesterday, a truck bomb exploded in a Shiite city the area of Baghdad, killing 54 people. ISIS claimed responsibility by way of a completely unverifiable online message that everyone's posting. But the attack bolstered Western government's long-term plans to divide Iraq up into three cute separate states. The Pentagon recently resigned itself to this policy, pushing for years and former U.S. armed forces in Iraq also said as much in recent comments that were denounced by the Iraqi government because surprisingly, we don't want you there. I know, it's so weird. We are so... <sighs> we're not grateful enough for the world domination thing, colonial attacks. We're obviously... You know, if we could just get on our knees. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to finish that statement. <laughs> yeah, there's no way out of it. So moving on. <laughs> our weather right now. It's crazy. It's going to be crazier. Humanity already already has used up an entire 
Earth's worth of resources this year. And we're in August. Humans have, in fewer than eight months, used one year's worth of the planet's resources. This is based on an analysis of the demand that human population is putting on the Earth. Various actions, such as pumping carbon into the atmosphere, scouring the sea of fish, at a rate which the planet can actually replenish these resources. It's become known officially as Earth Overshoot Day. We reached the point at which everything else we do this year is officially unsustainable. And it was actually six days earlier than last year. As it stands, we are on target to consume the equivalent of 1.6 Earths over the course of the rest of the year. For most of human history, we've managed to live within the planet's limits. But since around 1970, we moved into the red. Back then, humanity reached overshoot day, last few days in December. Ever since, we've been hitting it earlier and earlier and harder and harder. There is a certain ecological footprint we're talking about here. Our planet's true biocapacity. And I realize we still have a lot of people who don't believe that climate is changing. I don't know. It's August here in Ontario, Canada. Got my house locked up, my air conditioning on, the nights aren't even cool. I'm a little bit seeing. We're in trouble. Here. You know, if we keep on with business as usual, we're likely to be hitting the overshoot day by July 28th. They say by 2030, I don't think we have that long. The crisis, crisis is that the plural, <laughs> that we are seeing right now. It's terrifying, you know, to me. Look at our mother, the ocean. There would be no life if not for her. Water itself, last united common ancestor, Luca, the water, in the ocean, our oceans, the motherland, is in the midst of a radical, absolutely man-made. It's not even disaster anymore. It's like, if there was a scale of absurdity, we'd be, we'd be right into the kind of crazy that one of the most immense properties on the earth, the ocean still washes over 71% of us, this planet, completely transformed by a swarm of tiny, fleshy mammals. It's incomprehensible, but humans are indeed remaking our mother in almost every conceivable way. The ocean we know today, the one that billions of people still swim in and fish and float and surf in, the vast planetary body of water will be entirely different. By the end of the century, for sure, again, I'm not seeing it that long. There is only one global ocean, really. And it's changing in different ways, to different degrees, in different places. It's a single, huge, interconnected system. We are part of a biosphere. There is no separate thing on this planet. When thing dies, we all die. A little bit. Maybe you can't perceive it yet. 
Maybe it doesn't matter because it's not happening to you. Even the trash dumped off the coast of Australia will end up in the Great Pacific garbage patch. Pollution from China drifts overseas into North America. All of our carbon emissions, which is problematic, I'll say, but it ends up partially absorbed by the oceans everywhere. The actions of residents in Sheboygan, USA have affected in some minute way the future of the seas in Bangladesh. That's a thing about a biosphere that we are just a tiny part of. And it's not just that the ocean is absorbing more heat than at any point over the last, I don't know, 10,000 years. Its levels are rising. It's becoming more acidic. Its very chemical composition, it's not is changing, has changed. Ecosystems will be reordered. Currents altered. To billions who live closest to it, it will become more hostile. Coastal flooding will threaten cities. Arctic pathways will become open new trade routes. Fishermen who depend on seas will scramble to keep up with these shifting aquatic biomes. Worst case scenario, one in which we pursue business as usual through till the end of the century. The oceans end up looking like something like a post-apocalyptic Hollywood flick. We are talking about the depletion of fish populations. A mass die-off of much of the other sea life already happening, of course, because of water population, ocean acidification, and that other thing that you guys don't want me to talk about, Fukushima. Should I just say it's F you? I'm not sure how we ignore these things. And we are just throwing away the humans. You'd think we'd we'd care. Okay, so I'm I'm going to narrow it and saying maybe I'm too I'm too tough on us. We should care about the other humans, right? Forty migrants suffocated in water and fuel in human excrement off the Libyan coast a couple days ago. Escaping in an overcrowded hull sinking in the Mediterranean according to Italian Navy rescuers who did pull a 320 survivors rescuers arrived at this boat survivors were 45 men well 45 women and children the women were crying for their husbands and their children who died in the crossing and their husbands gave up their lives. The latest deaths come amid reports that more than 2,000 migrants have died attempted to cross the Mediterranean this year alone. That number is set to surpass last year's migrant death toll at sea which reached about 3,500 last year. The migrants who are fleeing persecution and war from parts of Asia, well, Africa, Asia, Middle East. European countries have reported an influx of migrants this year, numbering in hundreds of thousands. Italy has rescued more than 100,000 migrants at sea. Greece said there have been 100. 34,988 arrivals from Turkey. 
don't accept the migrants, you would probably say to me. Well, I would ask you, where are you living now? <laughs> where are you living? I don't know. I've tried to show you how how these things have led up to each other. Seriously. How this happens. Because it's just the beginning. You know that. The constant wars that have gone on on this planet, the resource theft that's never stopped in Africa, never stopped Turtle Island, never stopped anywhere, is getting worse. It will continue to get worse. Yeah, we could shut our borders. Who do we kick out? Seriously, who do we kick out? Who is not worthy of life? I read these articles that, you know, aliens may have prevented nuclear war on Earth. Um, yeah, well, land. Land and show yourself to me, because I'm not buying it. We're suffering here, you know, on this great mother. I look around and all I see is scorched earth. Nitrogen dioxide leaks. People not really caring. They're caring, I guess, if the people are the right color from the right country or if it's a person of course if it's the right kind of person but when we even look at people fleeing because of war who's the wars caused by really are we going to blame the people in their countries. Wars over resources usually have nothing to do with the people that live in that country. It's the truth. It's usually about some really greedy rich guys who have paid equally greedy not so rich guys to pay equally re greedy not so rich guys to go steal their stuff. And meanwhile, people die from the heat because they can't get out. Die from the landslides because, you know, with no trees, the land slides. Doesn't it? I don't know. I'm really thinking that the majority of Robots that uh, robots. <laughs> Someone sent me an interesting article. This cover up we're seeing is so deep and so involved. And we've talked about this before. The NASA scientists that this may be the largest cover up in human history right now. Suicides, like crazy suicides, where I've I sometimes get a whole list of them, and we laugh together. How absolutely that probably didn't happen, <laughs> not exactly in that way. Because you heard about the man jumping off the thirteenth floor of a building after ten million dollars. Because that one makes sense, right? I'm sure the stress of which family members to help was burdensome. 
Yeah, I'm being sarcastic here. How many people do you know who've been run over on their morning job? Would it surprise you to learn that some, in some professional circles now, a morning jog is more hazardous to your health? Because it's resulting in instant death now? And those of you who are not familiar with these stories, I have published a bunch of articles. Uh, many of them. Very mysterious deaths that we are seeing around the globe. High level bankers. Health warriors. For lack of a better term. Not just doctors, but people who are stepping out of the box and saying, you know what? There's that may be bad. Seventy four NASA scientists mysteriously dying. What did they do? You know, NASA hasn't told us the truth forever. So when you know they're killed, what could they have said? Hey guys, we didn't land on the moon. You, you don't get killed for that anymore. <laughs> do you think there could be a possible connection here between the deaths? Of close to 200 men and women related to the highest levels global banking and the space agency tasked with watching heaven have there been any other stories out there well I would say all of them that have been connecting the dots do you think husbands and wives and children of these 200 think this is all coincidence what about the, the guy who shot himself in the head seven times with a nail gun that one I just I can't let that go and perhaps this all sounds normal. Now, we've talked about the upcoming crash. Oh, and it's coming. United States cannot stick, keep that finger in that plug. Neither can Britain, neither can anyone else. Now, according to a CNN money report, United States lost roughly... 23% of its total net worth in 2008. You might remember that crash. The whole thing was Bush's fault, if you don't remember. Obama says so. Anyway, keep in mind that figure includes the top 0.1% of Americans we hear so much about. So a more accurate number to base things on would be the loss of or the total loss experienced by the average person virtually every person I know would have given a limb to have limited their losses to 23% so we really can't count uber rich with the rest of people because this whole planet has experienced this But almost half of the wealth of those invested in equities, it just evaporated. To wrap your head around how truly devastating the 2008 crash was, let me remind you that it is by no means accurate to say average family is heavily invested. Most of us are in debt up to our eyeballs living beyond our means surviving check to check if we make it that way average household 2008 for an entire working family slightly over 50,000 which you know if you're working that's, I, I would think that's good money so it's safe to say though many of those families are not making any investments into the average money portfolio crazy conspiracies secret societies I look at the news that I read to you and I just think oh god is there a way back from this seriously way back from this edge 
where we now have millions. I mean it. Millions of people homeless. Refugees from their own countries. Canada. We're having a massive amount of bird deaths here. Oil Sands, Alberta. Alberta? Who had that spill I was telling you about last month? One of the biggest in Canada's history. Actually, in less than a month, we've seen two major events that clearly demonstrate that we have a problem. The fires going on in the north right now. I just had a friend who drove through provinces. You can't breathe in Saskatchewan. And look at a map. Look at the size of that. You can't breathe. This is where Gerald's from. He's not even noticing it anymore, but if you've listened to me for a while, you'll remember how all the people up north in Canada are coughing. Alberta? Alberta is screwed. Alberta may be dead. Hardly anything's growing there. We're living the hung Hunger Games, are we not? That's why I call it Scorched Earth. It's obviously somebody out there that is not us. It's not us making these kind of decisions. It's never really been us. I think the majority of us like to have a nice, quiet family. A nice, quiet life. We find a girlfriend or a boyfriend and have a family and sit out at the, in the park Go outside for a walk. No, many not very intelligent people. <laughs> Look at the things going on and think, well, it's it's not that bad. It's not that bad. How is it not that bad? At what point when does bad happen? Seriously, at what point is this crap bad? Do we have to walk around like the people in China, our brothers and sisters in China, with a mask? But they've actually cleaned themselves up in a year. No one else has done that. They've done it. To have abusers and pedophiles in the major parts of government all over and we're still talking about it and doing nothing. Children taken on boats to be raped. That's a real thing. You know that, right? Are we going to blame scientists for this? And I'm sorry, folks. Is reality. And not some far fetched fear hype. So buckle up. I rarely suffer from claustrophobia, but I am reaching a critical mass here. The first time it came knocking was about 25 years ago. But half a year ago it hit me again. I have a psychological reaction to the laws and lies and distortions from political systems, but from the crap we have to hear and people who are supposed to be awake and they're still talking about this color and that color and who's right and who's left. Because one of those guys is going to be working for you. If they're in their government, they are not a good guy or girl. 
a cross-dressing pedophile. No, you only get elected if you're supported by the underbelly, the true underbelly. Our rights, our lefts, what we perceive to be our rights and our, our lefts to love, to live, to express ourselves, the tentacles of this control system reaching unprecedented power, micromanaging the good citizens of our biosphere. I thought, wow, the state of the planet is actually giving me claustrophobia right now. It must be bad. Or it must be me. So I, I pretty much nailed it down that it's bad. I think it's fairly profound, spiritual, you know. No matter what spirituality, experience to see, feel, taste, and touch, this planet feels like solitary confinement now. I'm going to continue on Turtle Island News. And thank you everyone else for listening. I love you guys. <laughs>